Good evening and welcome to our free enterprise Highway to the Zemus Zone race. I am Baka Shinobi and I am joined by Tower Sheep. How are you tonight, Tower Sheep? Well, I'm looking forward to a really good race. We have quite a lineup and I'm actually kind of excited to see what kind of possibilities this opens up for our run. Indeed, we've got Peasants and WFG, who's had three matches and is at eight points with one first place finish and one and two third place finishes. Mechalink, who has had two matches at four points, also with uh, two third place finishes, bringing to four points. Poidrak, who has had two matches, also with four points and two third place finishes. And we have Big Duncan, who has eight points, three uh, three matches, one first, one second, and one last. So. All of these plant runners are very hungry for a first place finish tonight. And it looks like we'll be getting underway shortly. We're starting off with Akidia, which is going to make for a very difficult uphill battle going for the uh, beginning of this game, depending on who she is partnered with. Oh, what? You make it sound like 30 hit points isn't too much to start with, and level 1 is a low level to start. Well, it's not that but it could be worse. They could end up with two of them, and then they'll have a combined total of 60 hit points for their first fight. It'd be equal to one Edward, and uh, I guess equal to one Edward is not necessarily the best measurement of early game strength. Yeah, I gotta give that the case. They'll be doing a lot of looting, hoping for heroin or something to give her a little bit of protection. Yeah, those early game tiaras might be very important to the 10 Wisdom's nice, but the large boost to defense would probably be more important to keep them alive in their first fight to get a little bit started. And it appears we are starting now. That must be a pleasant sight to their eyes, seeing a cane and starting off with a hook. Well, I Chad always wants a hook, Steve. Yeah, I think things got a bit less pleasant. They, uh, Brought up their hopes with the cane and brought them straight back down with that hook. It is a free character, so maybe they can get someone nice like a Foo or an Edge, or maybe they'll just get another Tell or get a Tell or everybody up. It's going to be interesting to see how these players approach this. I'm all for getting that extra character, and most, char most people will go and loot Troya, so they'll just know to spawn that glider and just go probably pick up a character in the midst of all their looting before they try to fight anyone. Indeed, though, it looks like they're stopping off in Baron first, and they see a Dark Knight Cecil guarded by King and Queen Evelyn. It's a free fight, but that's not really a uh, very hard fight, and I believe it was a Dancing Dagger in one of those pots. That's a good weapon for Rydia and Kane to use to get some additional early game damage. Yeah, it, it, that's always good to see a free fight, unfortunately, in that spot kind of a waste because most character, most enemies in that spot are going to be somewhat free with a couple levels. You really want something like those scripted fights of King and Queen Evelyn to be in somewhere that's a hard spot. Yeah, those uh, not having to go and deal with a much harder spot like if they're in state in the hook spot, the Rubicon spot, guarding the way underground, that would be a much more pleasant place to find these uh, bosses. And it looks like Peasants has finished looting, and there's a flame move in the back of Baron, which is a good weapon for Rydia to use. And you were correct on that Dancing Dagger, which, at least until she gets a couple levels, I wouldn't be surprised if they didn't use that. I see a couple people sell it off, their flame whips, because using that Dancing Dagger as an item will usually net you between two and 400 damage, depending on the character you're using it and the target that you are throwing it at. Oh yeah, it's a great early game start, and Point Track is going straight into this free Baron, uh, Baron in fight, which the first fight's free, the second one might cost a bit more. And Point Track is making use of both the Flame Whip, it seems, and the Dancing Dagger by giving Kane that deck. So he's able to throw it and keep the Flame Whip on Kitty. Good move because those fire twos would probably actually do a sizable amount of damage to this party. Meanwhile, we see peasants and Mechalink looting the Dampsian treasury. I believe they saw an elven bone there, which is a pretty useful item. Mom Bomb is the second. I do not think 
Boy Drek is going to get through this. Uh, the spot is not exactly fast, but it hits hard enough to go and take out his character, and he is reset. And we see a bit of a split here from the people doing their looting checks. You've got both peasants and Mecha and Troya, but you have Big Dunka who ran over to... Oh, sorry, they're, yeah, they're in Troya, and you have Big Dunka who ran over to go visit Edward because he was in his town. Uh, I believe they're in Damsayan, which spawns a hovercraft. Big Dunka is in Troya to go and get those two item shops. And Peasant's checking out the waterfall fight. Not one that's required, but sometimes Mist Dragons can show up there. Not today, as it's the two lunar dragons. And Mechalink is dropping off his hovercraft, but going to Agart quickly, while Peasant's is just diving straight into Antlion Cave. Seems especially with a... Rindia, they're going to be doing a lot of shopping because surprisingly none of them have even wanted to even peek at who that character could be because they know they're not ready to go beyond it so it's an interesting play to decide that you don't want to look for a free character, especially with st- such a weak starting cast. And they did have exits in the Baron shop so maybe Mechalik didn't check the Baron shop to find those exits and is looking around to find them. Meanwhile, well, Poitrak has gone and looted Baron himself, and he is bringing his hovercraft, and I believe he picked up some exits, so maybe he's going to give us the uh, first character check. Hopefully soon we will see peasants giving us a peek at who is in the Antlion Cave as well, which is a great place to start because it has a ton of treasure just laying around. And unlike other locations, there's no trap chest, so you just have a whole bunch of a whole bunch of value, and then a boss fight, which potentially holds key items. Yeah, and it's one of the weakest boss fights in the game. Only a thousand HP, doesn't do a lot of damage, and is reasonably tepid. Uh, it seems that there's a Dragon Whip found in one of these places as well, as Poitrick is equipping his Rydia with that. So that'll be a good weapon for her. Who is just now working his way down to the ant line, doing a quick equipment check, and the rest of the team is still looting. Um, an important thing to know for those who may not know what real connect, this game is randomized, so all of these bosses and the items they hold will be random. And it looks like Peasants has found a vanilla or a first wave Mylon fight with all of his friends in the ant line cave. He was a little lonely, so he used to go and always summon his own crowd. I, I suppose as the supposed earth elemental hanging out in a cave just felt a little more homey than on top of a bridge. Oh, but we're we're going to go and throw people into deep ravines. But uh, speaking of in caves, we find Poitrak seeing a second Rydia in Cave Eblin. Not one of the hard-gated characters, and not exactly the strongest pickup, but she can have her uses. Uh, meanwhile, Mechalink is going up to the top of Mount Hobbs to get the character there and discovering Forum, another character you're usually not terribly excited to see, but will take in a pinch. We're seen with no white ma- with no other white mages or anyone else who really use a decent white magic spell. I, I think it's better than nothing. I'm Although a firm believer. Fight a Leviathan. Yeah, Leviathan is uh, not... Yeah, Mechalink is resending out that Leviathan is not uh, giving up that form easily. But we see Rydia, or Peasants going up to Hobbs and getting the summon Jin. That's because of that little Hobbs flag where uh, if you take Rydia to the Mount Hobbs, instead of learning Fire 1, she'll learn a random summon that's not Bahamut or Leviathan. We're not that generous. It looks like Big Dunk has also decided that he thinks he can take on Leviathan and his team is not taking nearly as much damage from those waves so he may be able to tank this out if he uses those cures wisely from his white mage. True though, he might be in a position where the Ice 2s are going to do a fair amount of damage to him. This is a bit of a race I feel and his damage output is a little tepid. We have 
Mechalink, who is making his way down the Antlion Cave to go hang out with Mylon. And it looks like Peasants is giving that Leviathan another try, as is Poitrek. Yep, and Poitrek gets through. I saw that he threw a uh, vampire at that. That's a J item that casts drain and does a fair amount of damage for this stage of the game, so that problem gave him the boost he needed to get through. And he is out of here, taking his porum and running. Making good use of the exit spell, which when you're that deep into any of the caves or mountains, not all of them will allow you to, and the spell time is a little bit longer than most of that animation, but when you're deep in, it saves you seconds, if not close to a minute, on some places, just trying to get out so you don't have to take a long walk. Oh yeah, those the time walking, the screen transitions, the stairs, all these things can add up, even if the, uh, not everyone can cast exit, but if you find them in shops, which I believe these were sold in Baron, that can definitely go and save you some time. I believe the only character that will start with exit is Tella. Everybody else has to learn it, either through killing bosses, in the case of Fusoya, who gets spells based on the number of bosses killed in a random order, or you have to level up your two default white mages to learn it. Yes, though Rosa will not learn it by levels. She has to go and learn it by completing Zot. Cecil, however, will learn it. Meanwhile, we see peasants going to Kabul to go and take a peek at the shops here and try and go and take care of this uh, boss and key item spot, having earned the Baron Key from Antlion. And we see Sirens in the shop. Very good item. Summons of the rarest encounter in a tile, and there's a few places we know where we can find some very, very good rare encounters. like at pool we are just getting a peek at who that boss is and it is going to be Rubicon which shouldn't be too bad in this spot but still just a little bit scary because he tends to throw out some pretty nasty magic from time to time yeah that glare is pretty much guaranteed to go and kill one of the characters on this team those fire two eh, the fire twos are not doing too much damage thankfully he only counters with Fire 2 when you attack him physically, and he's got two people who can throw Dancing Daggers and just do damage that way. And he has a White Mage to go and revive people who get hit by Glare. Big Dunga is just cleaning up that Mylon fight. He does not have the Stardust, it seems. So he was not able to just get that free one-shot and bounce out of there. Nope, yep, seems like it's taking him a little bit longer and Poidrek is just about to get started, though Poidrek, I believe, has the biggest team of being the only person to pick up the second Rydia from Evelyn Cave and having that forum. Poidrek is popping his Stardust and Peasant is through the Rubicante and he will shortly be getting a key item from the King of Fabul. And meanwhile, Mech and Link went and ducked into Kaipo quickly to see who was in the bed, and it looked like a twin. I believe it was Porum, but I was not 100% certain. Chat's about to be very happy. Peasant's picking up a twin harp, which will get us, hopefully, music tonight. It all depends on whether or not Peasant thinks that that's the play and decides to check that key. Or whether or not he deserves, he just want, decides he just wants to be the hero Chat deserves. We believe in you, Peasant's be our hero. Meanwhile, both Big Dunka and Poidrak are finished with Antlion and are heading, Big Dunka heading straight to Kabul, and I believe Poidrak will be following not far behind. It looks like Peasants is going to do a little bit more shopping in Mysidia. Um, we have, as you mentioned, both runners... Poidrak and Big Dunka heading down to Fabul, and Mecha Link is getting his Jin summon from the front of Hobbs as we speak. That's definitely going to give Mecha Link a bit of a boost. That's 
a spell that uh, really, really doesn't learn many great spells early on. So these early summons could be a pretty big power boost for that for that team. Getting any kind of second tier spells, which usually are reserved for when she becomes an adult, which requires you to complete Baron Castle. So getting those spells early on, assuming she has the mana to cast them, can be very helpful against some of the bosses. Oh uh, yeah, so it's Dwarf Castle Underground. Baron Castle unfortunately doesn't go and teach Radio much of anything, but it will get us a character if we get that. And Pheasants might be inclined to do so because he's in Baron, he's going in taking on this Baron in fight, and is going to get a Dark Knight Cecil. He may feel like going in just trying to clean up both places before getting too far into the sea. Meanwhile, Poitrak is through his uh, Fabul fight, while Big Dunka is still having a little bit of trouble, but should be getting through it soon enough. Peasants is onto the Mom Bomb fight in the Baron Inn, which, as we saw, it does hit relatively hard for these lower level characters. But popping illusions in order to just avoid the all physical damage that Mom Bomb does should be enough to get him through this fight. Oh, yeah, that uh, Blink spell is pretty handy, ignoring two physical attacks for the price of one action. I can get behind that. And we see Big Dunka collecting his Twin Harp as well. Meanwhile, Me Mechalink is going back to Hobbs to try and pick up that forum. He really wants this White Mage. I, don't, I believe he's found some life potions, so he can go and get away with it in a pinch, but I imagine he's much interested in having some AoE healing. Now, going for the Dark Knight Cecil. I know most of the people don't like going up to ordeals, but I feel like that's going to be a thing some of our runners do, just because they have that Dark Knight Cecil may incentivize it just a little bit more. Yeah, especially since the Excalibur that's normally in the uh, you receive after forging the Adamant and Legend Sword is in the key item pool because that's been kicked out by the Crystal. There might be people thinking, yeah, I can probably find a good weapon for Cecil. He is going to go and just destroy everything and can carry things for me. I think that would be a good idea to go and hit ordeals. And some people may see peasants casting a stop spell with his hourglass on the boss. And that is because the mom bomb, when it splits into the little bombs, none of those little bombs have the boss bit. And he is awarded for an adamant for Kane getting his friend Dark Knight Cecil. And that is half of what they need to forge this crystal because we are playing on the V1 flag set, which means that the runners need three things to get the crystal. They need the adamant, they need the legend sword, and they need some way to get the underground. Right now, they have the hook to get underground, and now they have the adamant. Yep, they're halfway to go mode, needing only the legend sword and a way to Zeromus. This could be a very jetty seed. It'd be kind of funny if it ended up that that legend sword is sitting in some vanilla location, and Poidrak, it seems, is going out there to check. Another, oh, we see peasants getting stuck on the lady in Kaipo. Not the one in the inn, just one of the random townsfolks guarding the bridge like a troll. Uh, the NPCs, the true friends of all in the seed. I believe Big Dunka got trolled pretty hard by one of the barren uh, NPCs just sitting in front of the item shop door that he was really interested in trying to find out what they were selling. And we see that Kanizo is the first boss at Ordeals. This could be somewhat dangerous, so he doesn't seem incredibly fast, so you might be able to go and take care of him with a bit more ease. I don't think he's even taken an action at this point. And while Kidia does not have many spells, the lightning will be enough lightning one is enough to stop his gathering water. So having two people who can cast the lightning spell if he chooses to go that route, will be enough to just keep Kainazo at bay, but it looks like he's going to stick to just throwing daggers. Ah, damage overwhelming. Is there any problem you can't solve? Because the wave is based on Kainazo's HP. Do enough damage, the wave turns into a gentle splat. 
with all of these thrown daggers, I think he's really just praying for an edge to throw bigger weapons. Maybe he can go and get them some better pointers. And we see peasants actually going into Baron Underground, where he will pop out of Baron Castle and have to fight that boss that we saw at the very beginning. Yes, the boss that we saw at the beginning, and none of us, I believe, really care to remember because we had too many other exciting things. I always forget who that boss is when I'm playing, and I'm supposed to be paying attention to that stuff. I think we both got distracted by the fact that he just was handing out hooks today. Canes, hooks, and we are distracted by another lovely pleasant sight. The gauntlet is in the back deck spot on Ordeals. Everyone's favorite fight, it's 16 enemies, 5 uh, six fights, and each one of them is going to be a back attack. I'm sure Poydrak is extraordinarily pleased by this. Of all the spots to run into it, at least with his dancing daggers, he should be okay. It, it could be worse in some of the higher HP spots where they actually start hurting to have to go through those fights. But this is just going to be tedious for him. I mean, when your team has 200 to 400 HP, 18 damage every time you start a fight, it's going to start adding up. And we see Peasants, the person who gave us our uh, hook today was Ogopogo, the biggest jerk around. He likes to go and not only double big wave people to go and take off half your HP, he punches you twice and throws big waves again. And then if you use magic on him, he counterattacks. Where uh, those dance daggers, they count as magic. This game does have an interesting mechanic where any item or spell that you use will trigger that magic counter. Even though you were throwing a piece of metal at him, he still thinks, oh, that was magic, it counts. Yeah, and Peasants is just resetting out of this. I don't think he's going to go through this. This is... Uh... Oh, no, maybe he's just switching weapons. He's switching to the Dwarf Axe, which will go and let him do a bit more damage. Though it also reduces his agility and will make Kane a little bit slower in these fights. He was able, it looks like, to counter at least some of the agility loss by giving Kane a Ninja Helm, which will also increase his agility. So I believe it's only going to be a one or two agility loss because of that Ninja Helmet where it would have otherwise been, uh, I believe, a 5 agility loss from the Dwarf Axe. That is indeed correct. Meanwhile, we do see that Mechalink is going into Cave Eblin and is getting going to go and check some chests, maybe go and find the Stalemate fight in here. But Plot ready up for his troubles. The big Dunker fighting the gauntlet behind Poydrak. And as some people in chat are pointing out, that Dwarf Axe will allow Kane to get the back row glitch, which that means that you can do full damage from the back row. Unfortunately, or fortunately for our runners, when they were programming this game, they allowed you to set the status of doing full damage from the back row, but they never programmed it to remove that status. So once you can attack from the back row, you end up always having that ability no matter the weapon in your hand. Indeed, it's definitely a very helpful glitch. It's no boon in these cases because that uh, back row defense is going to matter a lot against Sergio Pogo, I think. <laughs> and Poijak has finished his gauntlet, and it looks like Big Dunka is just about done with his. He's on the gargoyle fight, which means he should have one more fight of guards after that. That, uh, I'm sure they're both happy to be almost done with this. That uh, was a true ordeal. <laughs> and for, for climbing up this mountain, they will be awarded an item and then have to fight one more boss who has relatively low HP. It is a vanilla legend sword. <laughs> and now we have a race to find a way to Zeromis. There's a lot... As long as we go and have all of our runners do our deals. This seed, this is a seed. And we see the other blue robe 
uh, fight coming out, the Water Hag. There's two fights you go and have the blue road spray on the overworld. Water Hag, who is a free fight that you go and hit three times. And it shows up, laments about Edward, telling him to fight. We all know he ignores that advice. And then Water Hag falls over dramatically because he's fighting a bard and that's what they do. Peasants has made it through the Ogo Pogo and he is now faced with Pale Dim. Apparently Baron has been taken over by the Lunar Bosses, but it just looks nice. And Riddy is doing work with that Dragon Whip, which does quadruple damage against dragons. Heldon might counter with slow, but I don't think he's going to care too much when it only takes four swings from Rydia to take him out. So it looks like we will have some of our runners, I would be willing to wager, taking that hook challenge because they know they have what they need to forge that crystal. And with sirens available, they can get some grind going and really start that party moving. Indeed, though, they might hold off on grinding until they find their darkness crystal. 10 key items would allow them to grind twice as fast with 10 key items granting double experience. And they don't know where the pass or the darkness crystal is. They may find 10 key items on the way there. Meanwhile, we see that Peasant has finished Peldim and is going to be getting, uh, playing that fight, rewarded with a character and a key item. Let's see if we've got an incredible jet seed and if we're going to be out of here in less than an hour. All the pet. Oh, a Fuso Ya hanging out in Baron. That is going to incentivize them to probably take. To, to do a little bit of hunting for bosses. Because, as I mentioned earlier, the more bosses you kill up to a certain point, he slowly gets his levels back because we have the Fuso Ya challenge flag on. Oh, yeah, and there's no better place to find a few bosses than ordeals, so I'm guessing Peasants is going to be running right up there and going to be having maybe a small heart attack if he doesn't get if he does or doesn't get a way to the Zeromas here because this is going to be a fast race now the real troll will be where is their access to the Z fight it looks like Baron just has a Leviathan with two Rydias that's not a bad thing to have I was going to say, but, it's uh, not quite a just when you have two Rydias. But the sad thing is Peasants right now has not done the hook check yet, so he doesn't know there's a second Rydia. That's true, and he might be incentivized to do that. Look at this team. Pesoya, Horum, Rydia, and Rydia. I'm going to guess we might see some reflex strats on Zeromus tonight. Kane doesn't have any exceptionally great weapons, and those spells add up very quickly and don't require much support to go and be really powerful. We see that the Mega Sisters are in the Odin spot. I don't think Peasants is really going to be in a position to take this out, but he does have Quake on Fu, so maybe he'll be able to take him out. Who is able to tank one of their spells? This may be a doable fight after all. Because as long as he can keep Fu alive, Fu is pumping out around 7,000 combined damage to those sisters. So he's going to take out that HP pool really fast. Yeah, and if those spells go somewhere else, he might be able to go and just take the hits on the chin, throw life potions, and keep going. Though they seem to really dislike Fu at the moment. They have identified the danger and are attempting to correct it. <laughs> And we see Mecha Link has gotten through Kainazo as well. Uh, I I wonder how many runners are going to sit there, see that gauntlet, and think, oh god, how awful is this going to be? And then see the Legend Sword and just curse someone's name. As a completely unrelated note, Scala Kitty is the rule of our seat tonight. Thank you, Scala Kitty. like um peasants is once again trying to get his food to stay alive but is having a little bit of trouble keeping him up and he resets out because they were just targeting his food just a little too hard 
Yeah, that's uh, one or two times is fine. Four or five, six attacks in a row when you have other standing characters is just a bit insulting. Megalink gets to play the fun back attack Cauntlet. Meanwhile, it looks like Big Dunka is going underground, and he may be the first to actually traverse through there, which would be a shame if he does not do Baron and get his adamant. Yes, that would be very, that would be disastrous for him. Skipping Baron in would be, he might feel he's behind and needs to pick up time, but that would definitely not be the place to pick up time. He's, you want that Baron in. I wholeheartedly agree, but unfortunately he doesn't have the knowledge we do, and having no good real weapons for Cecil, he may think, I can always go back there and take those bosses out, it's a free fight, and I don't know what's behind that free fight. Very true. And with peasants up on our deals, he's gonna go and get through this Kanaizo pretty quickly when he's got his own. Well, he could drop him down in Deep Ravine, or he can go and put him on ice. Frozen turtle, anyone? As long as you're not trying to cook an octopus, I think we'll be okay. And it looks like we have Big Dunka getting his second Kidia, and Poidrek is making that run through Evelon Cave and is probably making his way underground. So, just to recap, we've seen two moon bosses so far. The first being Ogopogo in the first Baron Castle spot, and the second being Plague in the second Ogo, uh, Baron Castle spot. At least the three remaining bosses, moon bosses of Plague, the Lunars, and Wyvern. Wyvern is banned from blocking the only way to the underground. It doesn't mean that it's guaranteed not to be Wyvern, because if it is, Big Dunk will know there's a D-Mist or some other check around to go and get access to the underground. like we have our looks like peasants is just about done with his gauntlet and mecha link not far behind and we and may see on our point direct stream we may end up seeing our first use of the life glitch this seed if he manages to get that hourglass off in time yes looks like kane was getting kane through it for him while Rydia and the rest of his team got punched in the face a fair bit So for those who are unaware, the life glitch is when you kill an enemy and you cast either a life spell or you use a life item on the enemy. And they will be revived with zero HP and immediately die again, netting you double experience for that fight. The reason they do this is because all enemies have a vitality zero for their stat. And that means that the way the game works is if you revive something, its vitality determines how much health it gets back. So with vitality zero, it gets zero health and it's dies. Also, if you curse string your own character with exactly 15 vitality, they'll have zero vitality and will not respond to your life one spells. If you've ever gone and had that happen to you, it's a little surprising and shocking the first time. It looks like Big Dunka is doing his Baron fight, and one of his Rydias is staying down for the time being. But he is on the Mom Bomb fight, which will give him the other half a go mode that he so desperately needs. Oh yeah, he's, uh, we're nervous for a second, but it looks like all of our runners are going to find both parts of their crystal overworld, unblocked by anything really waiting for them to go and get it. This is going to be... This will be a terrifying race of who finds the way to the... either to the moon or to Zeromas through the past. And as our runners are all treading on similar ground, it's important to know that having that foo is making the gauntlet a lot more bearable because he's able to use some higher level magics to just nuke them down as opposed to having to 
physical every character down. Yeah, it looks like Fort Drax's a bit ahead of uh, Peasants right now, but Peasants is going to have a Fu going through this route, and Fort Drax has not gone into Baron Castle. And Fu just learned Cure 4. That's a pretty big spell to have. Ooh, and I Big Dunk got taken if... fortunate wipe to the mom bomb. Sorry? I'm saying, I wonder if Peasants is going to end up keeping his cane and his Cecil with the limited weapon pool they currently have, or if he's going to end up taking a second Kidia because he went through Baron and got that Leviathan. That second Kidia is going to be pretty big, pretty tempting, especially since she's going to be level 1 and she can get slingshotted off the Mad Ogre fight in Upper Babel, which Poydrak has just gotten through. That can give her a good chunk of experience and get her the mana pool she needs to go and be casting those nice Leviathan summons. Peasance is having a nice chat with Anna while occasionally taking swings at his water hag, which is always a fun fight to just watch Anna talk and talk and talk. Uh, it seems like she's attracted to Edward, not maybe not for his talking skills, but for his listening skills. But there he is, he's through, and he doesn't have much reason to go and check anywhere else above ground. I think he's going to go start, go straight through the hook, and he <laughs> he's going to be greeted by Odin in the... King Queen Evan spot. This is going to be unpleasant because Odin is fast and Odin hurts. And he's going to kill you if you don't kill him in a very few number of turns. If I was in his position, I would be hope I would just be spamming lightning one at him as soon as he raises his sword, because that does have a chance to do quad nine damage. Although a low chance, getting that high damage in the spot would definitely give him the advantage he needs. I think he's only going to go and get uh four times lightning damage normally, but if you get, if you strike Odin with thunder on the third time he raises his sword, you can get a special kill on Odin that says oh, thunder struck Odin and he will instantly die regardless of damage. But you have to survive the first two Odins and these Odins are doing a lot of damage to this party. And Legend Hunter is correctly pointing out, no one's in Twin Harp, maybe Magma Key is there. If Wyvern is behind this Odin, this that would not be the logic path, and it looks like Peasants is going to do that Twin Harp. Maybe. We have Megalink, who is running into Baron. He'll be very excited to see who is waiting for him behind the throne. As long as he can get through these two super fun fights of Ogopogo and uh, Paledim. Alan will probably be a lot more free because he's got that dragon whip. Ogopogo, however, he's never free. And Wooper pointing out in chat that the Magnum Key can't be behind Odin's spot. Well, you're correct and incorrect. Logically, if it's the correct path, the logic path underground, it cannot be in the Odin spot. That is not, uh, that is determined to be too high level to be acceptably done before you get underground. But if it's not the logic path, it can still technically be there, but it would be a much lower chance. But and if Magma Key is... Sorry. We see Poydrak running up to Toria to save, and looks like he will also be giving us some Twin Harp goodness, because he is bailing out of the underground for now. I do not blame him. Odin is a pretty mean boss to get through without, uh... Without, like lit 2 or some other strong lightning damage, it's kind of hard to chew through that 6,000 HP, and without an anchor, that spot is going to be much faster than you. A curse string would do a lot of help in this position, I believe. And it looks like Mecha Link is most of the way through his Ogopogo. Should be falling relatively soon. He's keeping his health up at a, at a almost full for most of his character, so he should not have much of a problem with this fight. 
and Peasant's getting his second kitty. We'll see if he decides to keep her or not. Right now, now that we know, I think the correct thing to do would be to take the kitty up, but not level her. And he is dropping... Oh, no, he's not dropping Cecil. He is dropping Kane. I'm a big fan of that play because Cecil can not only heal, he makes a pretty good chemist, and he has a bit of a higher HP pool and can wear slightly better armor, but he can also wear all the armor Kane can, so it's not like you're really losing much by keeping Cecil and getting rid of your Kane. Yeah, now that the AA flag is on, he's not guaranteed to be your agility anchor, and he's uh, already a paladin, so that's Kane, one of Kane's biggest advantages over him. So speaking of agility, I'm a, I've brought this topic up once or twice, I might as well talk about it slightly. The game is programmed that normally Cecil determines the relative speed of all other characters. He is the average speed, and anything that has more agility than him will be faster, and anything with less agility than him will be slower. Up to a point. The point is five times faster, having two and a half times the agility Cecil has. So if you go and have someone who's incredibly slow that everyone is two and a half times faster, then your whole party is going to do, just do more for you. And I believe we have some Lucia 2 music coming in. Thank you, Podrak, for letting us know that it is the Sinestral theme from Lufia 2 while you're rewarded fighting CPU. I'm sorry you didn't deserve this. You were the hero we needed, not the hero we deserve, Podrak. As he fights the CPU, we see peasants also using the life glitch on the bad ogres in the underground. Big Dunka is on his way to Evalon Caves, and Mechalink has moved on to Pale Dim. That means Mechalink's gonna go and have the choice of who replaces... Who does he, uh, replace with Fu in his team, because I don't think he's gonna go and pass on him. And... Quidrak going in getting through this CPU fight, it's never gonna be incredibly dangerous, but it's not gonna be incredibly fast, either. know that the attacker will do a percentage based attack so it's not a scary fight it's very predictable when you're going to die unless you do something silly like berserk your characters and try and get through and just hope that you just hit the cpu a lot and not the attackers because if you kill both of the, the orbs the cpu does an attack called globe 199 or globe 099 which is almost guaranteed to do maximum damage to whoever it hits, unless it's an exceptionally low power of magic stat spot. So you usually don't want to go and take out both the orbs, even if they are really annoying. We have a question from our chat that who was at Ruby? And now I can't remember who it was as soon as I saw the question. It was a moon boss. We don't know which moon boss. Logically, it can't be Wyvern, but point tracking to us if we're dealing with logic right now in this route. Furthermore, we've seen Ogopogo at the Bygan spot in Baron and Paladin at the throne of Baron. So those are two moon bosses also out of the running. And we have Poidrak through his CPU fight and he is rewarded with an Excalibur. He is going to be very happy that he still has that Cecil. Yeah, that Cecil is going to go and uh, he's going to have paid his dues and be ready to do a lot of damage. Meanwhile, Peasant getting into his Odin fight and I believe he's going to get through because he got a lit two off with Fu and a Leviathan with Rydia. That should be enough to do 6,000 damage and take out this Odin. He's through. Peasant's given us a peek at who, which of the remaining lunar bosses is there. My bet is playing. 
not even oh going back and saving first a smart play he may get a free heal but there's no reason to not safety save because it could still be a nasty fight and it's just not worth the risk yeah you don't want to go and try and do that Odin fight and have him uh just do the wrong things kill your party and prevent you from getting through another two or three times best to go and take the safety see Boydrak going on a bit of a demist hunt it looks like he checked the vanilla demist spot and found no luck there and we have peasants in the rubicon spot fighting clay well this is not the worst fight to go and get through he can go and kill off one of his characters revive them and then Play will go and redo his count, but it will go and take a little bit of time, and he does need to go and make sure one of those characters dies, which is going to be a little tricky at this point, because he's committed three characters to going and uh, attacking. So, let's hope he can go and get a turn quickly to kill off a character and then revive them. He's hopefully that his Cecil can do just enough damage to put him through. Meanwhile, Poydrak has decided that he is going to go and see who's in Baron and get whatever key item may be there, hoping it'll help him in that underground fight. And with that, uh... Ooh. Ooh. Horum is hanging on a little bit more uh, dearly than I believe Peasants was hoping, and he mm -hmm. takes a white. Big Dunka is now challenging that Odin, and it will be very interesting to see if he is able to pull it off as well. He's using a silk web to slow Odin down, which may give him the time he needs. But it looks like that sword's up, and he's in for quite some trouble. Yeah, I think any party that doesn't go through either Twinheart or uh, Baron is going to be in for trouble. He does dodge the first Odin with his cane, but... Uh... Kane's in trouble. He might be able to get a second jump off. He might be able to... He's dodged the second one. If he can go and survive until that sword comes up again, he can throw a Thor Rage. He does not survive, unfortunately. We see Peasants challenging playing again, but smartly killing the Porum off right away. This way he can revive that Porum, which will cause Plague to cast is count on everyone again as if there's ever a character that does not have count plague recasts on the entire team well he might take a little uh, extra time to cast it which can be detrimental to your team as that count can go all the way down you have to revive everyone but he, oh he might be trying to go and reflect a count onto him that will go and get to plague to just spam count because he will not successfully cast count on forum Oh, and that was lucky, as everyone was at zero, that's when Plague decided to use Count on, on his party, so he is basically in a safe zone for this fight, because Plague will continually cast Count, and he does not do any other attack. Yeah, this is definitely a good break for play, for um, Peasants. This will let him just unload with his casters. You know, to throw out those Leviathans, Cecil can go and swing as freely and doesn't need to worry about killing off characters and reviving them himself. Plague will just keep spamming it because he's not getting in on forum. Poydrak has entered his Ogo Pogo fight in Baron Castle. And it looks like Mechalink will be joining Peasants and Big Dunka in the underground boss fight arena. Indeed, he gets to go and start fighting through Odin. Big Dunka having a bit of trouble. This is just... This is a hard fight. This is a very hard DPS check, and really does not get a lot of the tools to do the lightning damage, do the damage he needs. Either you need to grind some levels to get Virus, or you need something like Leviathan for, uh, like Peasants has for Rydia to go and contribute serious DPS. Even with that ability to manipulate the count, it seems that Peasants is still having quite a fight with Plague because he has such a high HP pool. He is just really 
sitting there having a slugfest with him. Maybe Plague is smiling because he sees this and sees that it's a long ways off even for him, but it's getting closer as 2,000 damage from each of these uh, Leviathan summons is going to go and get through, I believe, his 25 to 26,000 HP here. And we see Poydrak using both Excalibur and the Dragon Whip to do a substantial amount of damage per hit to that Pale Dim. So this fight will most likely not last nearly as long as it did for our other runners with the weapons that he has. No, I don't think Keldon had... Keldon has even less of a chance than he did the first time. Meanwhile, Mechlink is into the uh, plague fight himself, and Baydunka is still trying to get through Odin. It's This is going to be an uphill battle for him. And it looks like the wall wore off on uh, Porum on uh, Peasant's side, so he's reverted back to just killing her off and Bart and letting him go and revive characters. And Boo goes down quickly, so he's going to be able to go and throw another life and get another character up quickly, getting a bit of extra breathing room to take down Forum and revive her. Interesting enough, Poydrak decided that the only healer he needs is Boo. He got rid of his Forum, which may help him in in this plague fight because he is also going to have three casters who are going to be doing a lot of damage. Indeed, and Peasants is through the plague fight with a very, very photo Rydia 276 Dragon Whip swing finish. Drac will be collecting his Leviathan and it looks like Mechalink has also gotten is also using the strategy of repeatedly killing and reviving one of your own in order to keep play casting that count as opposed to putting up a wall which may not always be the easiest to do just based on the agility of your characters and it also looks like he chose not to pick up the second for the second uh Verdia, though maybe he made that decision before he saw the uh, Leviathan summon in Baron, which he might be regretting something now, but Peasants is through, he's underground, and he is... He might be first, but he might not be feeling it after do doing so much, and knowing that one more item, and they're in go mode, and they're going to Zeromis. And with Mechalink and Big Dunk on his tail, it's probably better he just go, go, go. Because he really is not being given a whole lot of breathing room at this point. Yes, and it looks like he's going to go straight to Fey March in the hopes... Oh no, he is going to do some grinding first. He wants to go get some more levels on his characters. He's going to go pop some sirens and gain some levels quickly. If I had to guess, he's looked at his team and said, If I do Dwarf Castle, I can keep these two at a high enough level to where I'm comfortable just doing bounce strats. Indeed, and using the dragon whip to go and crack some eggs stealing virus on his Rydia's, that's a bit faster and a bit less mana intensive spell for them, so maybe he's going to go get levels to clear all the underground, or he's just going to get virus. Either way, we see Poydrak is coming back into the underground with a much more well-equipped team and is much more prepared to just destroy the smiling eyeball. Big Dunk, unfortunately, has fallen to play. Don't know if he safety saved after Odin or not. I unfortunately did not catch that. He did find a curse ring, which might be able to give him some additional help. That might have gone and gotten through the Odin fight. That is definitely a very good pickup by going and reducing all your stats by 15. When uh, the only ca the real casualty or the real goal is to reduce your agility, that is a pretty huge find. And we find the pass in Fey March. Peasants is in go mode. He's, he's getting right out of there. He's going to go make that crystal and probably just grind this team up. I would. It'll be interesting to see, but he has to still do Dwarf Castle if he wants to use this team. Otherwise, he's got some dead weight. But he may try to do it with just with just Porum and 
Viridian will still learn new without going and doing Dwarf Castle. Dwarf Castle will only teach the level two spells and her mid tier summons. She can just skip all those spells and go straight to nuke at level 50. It's going to take a lot of eggs, though. That is 1 million experience you need to get on Rydia to get her new. Okay, you need to get her a little bit more than 1 million experience, but that's going to be a lot of eggs. Artemis arrows are for sale in the shop. That could be pretty big for some people who didn't find a dragon whip. But Peasants has his crystal. Does not have 10 key items, but I think he's just going to go and grind. And today I learned about Rydia only getting level 2 summons. I don't know where I got the idea that you had to level her up to get her the more advanced badges. She will. But... She won't learn the level two spells naturally, but she will learn her level three spells in around level forty. It's just you know you never really have Rydia around to go and learn those big. She's got a giant gulf in her uh, where she learns her spells, and then she'll start learning them normally again. It's a. Uh, it's something that doesn't come up until you've gone and really uh, played with her a fair bit in this randomizer. But we do see Mechalink is through. As soon as he goes to Fame March, he's going to be in go mode. And Peasants is exiting out. I believe he was going to pick up some more Sirens. And either he picked them up there or he misremembered where they were. Mechalink has his Leviathan and it looks like... Big Dunka is struggling to take this plague down. He may have run out of life potions. Nope, he, he has a couple more, but with both of his teammates at zero, he's in a berserk Cecil, it looks like. He was unable to get that life potion off. That is unfortunate. You see, Poydrak is in the same fight, not too far behind, but uh, this is not going to be a seed where... Any diversion that didn't go and grant him what he needed is going to be... That's going to be a time loss because this is not going to be a fight I think you want to go and take Excalibur Cecil to. Though, then again, Excalibur Cecil and Kane with a Fisoya backing them up might be able to take out Zeromus. It's not the worst idea the more I think about it. And we see Peasants just... The peasants finds his sirens. He's... He's going to sell all he can to go and finance this decision, but uh, he's going to go and get his sirens. And had Mechalink kept his Boro, having that Excalibur Cecil and a cane to do some nice DPS, he would have had a nice white mage and been able to do just a little bit of bouncing just to avoid the counter nuke and put a little extra damage on him. I think Vesoya can be enough of a white mage if you find some Aether 2s. Forum's, Forum's a white mage, but her HP growth makes her very hard to take to the Zeromus fight, so that's something that I can keep in mind. You'd have to do a lot of extra grinding to make her safe, or you go and risk having her go down when you want your, the rest of your team just to be zerking. But Peasants has found his sirens and is back to that peninsula and is ready to go and just start killing it, cracking eggs. He wants to go and get that experience as soon as possible. I do hope that Peasants goes back to the overworld before throwing one of these sirens, because he looked like he was moving while he went into this menu, which can cause issues and potentially soft lock you if you're moving and use a siren. True, you can go and uh, desync your uh, map and right position so you might just have to land somewhere safe and reload but uh he's he's making his omelets and mechalink has gone to the correct location is going to find his pass and it's going to be in go mode as he's already forged his crystal now it's time for mechalink to figure out what he's going to do because he did not take two radius he only has one he has a foo but uh he does find coffins which could be helpful for getting a bit of an early start on this grind we're gonna have to see how he approaches this Looks like Big Dunka is still putting on damage and he is berserking up his radio with the whip. And it looks like Kane is going to be his sacrificial offering to Plague to keep Plague casting that out. Poydrak doing a similar thing, also keeping his Kane dead going and 
leaving him on the ground. This is, he does have a bit higher DPS with Cecil and Cecil with an Excalibur and the Rydias with their Leviathan, so he seems to be alternating between the Rydias to uh, stretch the MP as far as possible. Unfortunately, I did not see what our good friend, the Jobdorf, was doing for a living this seed. And it looks like Nekalink came prepared with sirens and with the coffins, he's going to make short work of these first couple of dragon eggs. Indeed, this is going to be an exciting and thrilling match as we have two people scrambling eggs grinding on the top screen and two people killing their characters trying to get through this play plate on the bottom screen. This, uh, this is going to be a race of numbers, I think. I, it'll be very interesting if Mechalink and Peasants end up neck and neck. Mechalink using that cabin before these fights, despite having more than enough coffins to get levels before needing to heal. That could end up costing him some time, so it'll be interesting to see how that plays out, because he could have just used the coffins and then used Fusoya's nuke or weak in order to crack these eggs without having to waste time resting at a cabin. Indeed, but we see Poidrak is through and he is going to go... If he goes straight to Baymarch, he'll be right in this egg scrambling race, and uh, peasants you know, low roll and taking out that uh, yellow dragon. If you're ever curious why these ex eggs are giving so much experience, that's why they're holding yellow dragons who will go and uh, do mean things to your face if you want to wake them up. Like Mechalink has just done. Luckily, both of their parties are pumping out enough damage that even if the egg gets cracked and the dragon comes out, the next attack is going to put it back down. And Big Dunka has finished his play fight and is on his way out. It's if they don't go to Fame Arch, they are going to be in a very bad position. But uh, I'm thinking all these runners are going to go for the fastest check they can, and Fame Arch is the fastest thing they can check. With how available the other key items were, I, I would just be forcing myself to check Fame Arch because. Everything else was practically handed to them, so I think Fey March would be the, the best bet right now. Oh yeah. Point track whoever taking the detour to Porch's crystal, doesn't want to forget that, just wants to get that out of his inventory. I don't blame him. And with Big Dunka through, we have all our races in the underground, and I think we're gonna find all of our races in go mode very shortly. It looks like both of these teams are pretty comparable in levels right now so they are really grinding up but it'll the difference between keeping the cane or keeping an extra Rydia might be a difference and Poitrak is buying Artemis arrows maybe he's thinking I'm going to give a bow to Cecil and I'm going to make sure that uh, I just shoot these I shoot this endlessly and kill them as fast as possible don't want to go and risk having second hits Meanwhile, Peasants is going and trying to kill off his Cecil, it looks like. I believe he's got him at a agility that he likes and doesn't want him to be gaining any more levels. And with 2,400 HP, he will be just fine, even if he fails to nerf a Big Bang. That Cecil will most likely still survive. Yep, it looks like uh, we've got... Lots of people just going straight into these eggs. Everyone is finding their pass. Everyone is going to go and be in go mode. Everyone is going to be cracking eggs. So while, while we're watching this grind, I just want to thank Elias for doing the tracking and Bryceleu for restreaming us. Mm -hmm. Indeed, thank you both. Without you, we wouldn't have a stream. And we should also thank our runners for going in, being the restreaming, and allowing us to have a show tonight. And the real hero of this stream is Poidrak for giving the people their music. 
indeed. That's uh, Poitrek is in an interesting position where he might go not with Reflex Strats, but with Zerker Strats because he's got a Cecil with an Excalibur. That's enough to take out Zeromus if you can go through that get through that fight enough. This is going to be uh, he might save some time on eggs by going and having picked up that Excalibur. Yeah, he he very well may do a bit of a um a bit of a hybrid where he ends up bouncing viruses. I I've seen that done a couple times where you go full berserker, but then you have your black mages just throwing out viruses if they're not high enough level. Yeah, might as well go and squeeze out whatever DPS you can because uh those black mages won't be around for long. But this is certainly a jet seed. Almost everything you need for the crystal in the overworld, except for the pass, which is in the most free spot underground. And we see Big Dunka is heading up under out of the underground, probably to go and find some sirens for himself because they think he uh, expected to be using them at a bit more a bit more measured pace. This seed has largely come down to execution because of the path that all the runners went down was pretty much the same. Poidrak being the one who made the really out there check and he's still neck and neck with everybody else because he got a really good payout in that Excalibur sword from checking the Magus Cave. Indeed, it looks like... Um... Oh yes, Fubul is where the Sirens were. I was thinking that he, that um, Big Dunk had checked Sheila 1, or done the Sheila 1 check, but I was mistaken. Though. He's just going to go and sell whatever he can, sell whatever equipment he doesn't need, and buy Siren. Poidrek is going back into the Fey March. Maybe he's going to pick up some coffins? I'm not entirely sure. Oh, he does not have his pass yet. He must have reset at some point. Maybe he took a wipe on one of those eggs and had to come back. As you mentioned before, if you hatch those eggs and don't have a way to deal with that dragon right away, he is not a nice person to be there. Oh, and Poitrek apparently was just grinding early because he uh, wanted to see if he was going to take on some fights. He's now, he apparently grinded enough to think, I'm going to take on the Fate March bosses, grabs that, and heads on out. And Peasants is almost done. He has his ready at, one ready at level 48. That is two levels shy of Nuke. I believe Peasants is going to be going very shortly. Big Dunk of Beat looks like he's just getting ready to start his grind. And he's casting stop to make sure that that egg does not hatch. Because he does not have a lot of damage to start with. It looks like he's going and uh, killing off one of his radius with an anchor. This is going to be... I'm curious how he's going to approach this fight. Because if you're going nukes, you want both radius getting experience. Cat pointing out that Poidrak may not have found the sirens in the shop and now he's just looking around for them. And lucky him, he has wandered right into the bull. Yeah, though 10 might not be... Well, 10 might be enough if you're going to go just with Cecil to level 44. If you're bringing Rydia to Nuke, that won't be. But Excalibur might be enough. We're going to see what it is, but we see peasants... Peasants needs to get more bosses on Fu. Fu is not at full power. He's going to go and kill the boss who is here in the Mist Cave to finish powering up Fu, I believe. And he gets a relatively free fight in the Dark Imps, who he are not really a very hard boss, especially when they have no HP. Yeah, I think this is a bit of an uneven fight. The reason I'm saying they have no HP is because that is normally the spot where you will find the Mist Dragon, the very first boss in the game. And when there are multiple enemies, and he gets nuke on his foo, so he probably does, is going to just bounce out and say, I'm done grinding here. But if you enter a boss spot, and you end up with multiple enemies where that boss should be, then HP pool is split amongst them. 
I think he's going to go and just try and get all the HP he can on Nuke because Pasoya is one of the other people he wants to go and survive the uh, Big Bangs. Here's the Lunar. I think we saw this previously, so I was wrong about where uh, what bosses it could be in uh, the blocking the way to Underground. But we do know that where the last Moon boss is, they were spotted on the top of Upper Babel. So Wyvern is in Keyless Tower. Shame that none of our runners decided to get frisky and dodge that. And that is a full-powered foo. So we are probably going to watch peasants run right over to, to Troya and use that pass in the pub. Yep, it looks like he's not even safe. Okay, he's going to go back out and safety save. I was going to go and uh, that's there's a line between confidence and uh, silliness, and that was a bit silly. But he's on his way to the Shermus fight. And we have a little question to ask because, well, we don't go and add his rooms to the normal boss pool. We do go and uh, give him a little bit of randomization in this randomizer in the form of a makeover. And with that, we have one question we'd like to ask. Whose butt are we going to kick tonight? Indeed. Get your Z flags out as we find out who it is. Looks like Mecha Link is going to be right on Peasant's heels. He was just killing a couple extra bosses to get his foo fully powered, and now he is landing at Troya to save up and head into that Z fight as well. We might be seeing all four of our runners in the Z fight at the same time because Poydrak is looking at his levels and he might be thinking, I'm getting close. I'd be willing to bet that we have three of the four of our runners all in Z fight at the same time. Because Poydrak looks like he's just about done with his, or could be potentially just about done with his grind based on how high of a level he already has on his party members. Oh yeah, this is just going to come down to very small differences, I feel. Scala has given us in this scene she has rolled. For the see, right. Mechalink does not have white on Palom or Nuke on his Rydia, so he is going full Berserker Strats. Furthermore, I don't believe Mechalink did the Twin Harp fight unless I'm mistaken. The only one to do the Twin Harp, I believe, was Poidrak. And it looks like we have Zeomus. For those, uh, Final Fantasy Star 4, a game I didn't play until I was much older and discovered it was actually available on the PC, and yeah, I had a fair amount of fun with it. Based on that recommendation, maybe I'll try it sometime soon, because I have yet to play that game. Well, if there's anything else to augment that recommendation, it was uh, less than $5, I believe. Uh, that sounds like a bargain for a good game. We have Mecha Link also entering his Z fight. He's about to square off with Zeoma shortly. Going to go and find out that the true force of evil is a different force from a different game today. like Peasants has already lost his Quorum, but it would be interesting to see if he even bothers trying to pick Quorum up. Most likely not till after that first Big Bang. Yeah, and his nukes are seeming a little tepid. I don't know if he left the uh, whiff on Rydia or if he's just not got, gotten a lot of uh, extra magic power because these are some 5 or 6,000, 7,000. This is... Uh, if it takes a long time to get through these nukes, this might be a little harsh on a uh, peasant. He is smartly using Cecil as a chemist to avoid that HP refill, it seems. 
but I don't see Cure Threes in his inventory, so this is going to be a bit tricky for him. Meanwhile, we see. Sorry? It would seem that Mecha Link's nukes are also slightly underpowered for what he's hoping for from his food. So it looks like Peasants has got a bit of a lead just based on damage output and avoiding half of the HP pool on this final boss. Yeah, I'm surprised that uh, Mecha Link is. Burnt. I wonder. So, a few days ago, Simbu has shown off a very interesting Z-Strat, where he ground up just to cure 4 on Porum, and then had her be the main healer. No, my mistake. He uh, would nerf every Big Bang, because he was reliably at relative agility 1, and had a wall on Porum. I was wondering if Mechalink was doing a similar strategy, but I do not believe that is the case. There are some. This season has seen a lot of new strategies, but it seems that right now those are not currently what our runners are going with. And that is a flash. That is a good game, peasants. We have our first place finisher with an official time of 1.13.58. GG peasants. We'll see if we can get him in here for an interview. Mechalink, meanwhile, taking a bit of a harsh uh, Big Bang, but still surviving, still hanging on. He needs to go and get people up, but uh, I think he's going to go and stabilize after this. That black hole may have been a blessing because he's not going to have any walls, so if he wants to cast a higher level cure, he can do it without worrying about curing that serums. And while we attempt to get peasants in here. It looks like we have still some more grinding out of Big Dunka, and Waydrak is in Dorf Castle just doing a little shopping. And we are joined by peasants, OMFG. GG peasants on your first place finish. How do you feel? I feel so good. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. What were your thoughts on that seed? That was a real. That was really dumb. Like uh, everything about that seed was really silly. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, you. Uh... That was how you really feel. <laughs> I'm really glad. Like I made the uh, the Baron play, getting uh, both Leviathan and Fasoya. Like I think probably clutched that out for me. I assume. Yes, that let you pretty reliably go and get through those fights in the hook route and just sail into the underground. You were the first underground. Ah, oh, dope. I was, I was, I was pretty sure that I was. Um, like when I saw Golden on a deals, I was like, oh no, this is the wrong play. I was so close to resetting out, but I was like, oh no, I'll, I'll do it anyway. And um, I'm so glad I didn't reset out of it. <laughs> yeah, that uh, that was a harsh one to see. A cruel, cruel twist, and one that everyone had to go through. <laughs> I was like, I, I've got a Fusoya and Leviathan, so I was like, I can hit the hook now. But then, I, but then, um, then I was like, I'll do all deals really quickly to get my like Cecil up. And then when I saw Gauntlet, I was like, I, I really shouldn't. Like everything in my head was like, I shouldn't be doing this. This is not the right play. And then I was like, I stuck with it because I didn't want to walk back down. Oh, sorry, I need to advance my text. That was, yeah. uh, your early game was certainly a bit of a trial with just starting with Kane and Rydia. It's, <laughs> Kane's nice, but he doesn't exactly start with a great weapon. How did you, uh, like that early? I was just dancing, I was dancing daggering everything. Like, I think I used, like, dancing dagger like 20 times on Mum Bomb. Uh, a I couldn't use it on Ogo Pogo in, in, in Odin. I had to, uh, in, um, Bargain spot. I had to reset out and swoop, swoop, uh, swap to like um, to the dwarf axe or whatever I was using at the time. Yeah, that was uh, Ogopogo was a bit of a rude boss, yeah. and we 
technically saw where every single moon boss was in this siege, as you showed us Ogo Pogo, mm. Pale Dim, Plague, uh, the Lunars, and the boss on top of Upper Babel was another moon boss. Oh, so it would have been um, would have been Wiffen. Yes, yeah, silly seed. A... What? what... <laughs> I did not like to go and throw uh, easy things at you, but, uh... You have, uh... What's that? After you. After you. Oh, no, I had, I know, I had nothing to say, that's all good. <laughs> God, how did you feel just going in, grabbing 30 sirens, and grinding up uh, new gun rich? See, I, I think I had, like, like uh, 20 sirens or something, like... I had, like, 20 sirens or something, but then, um... I, I knew that because I only had six key items, I was going to need more than that for Nuke on Rydia. But then I couldn't find where I bought Sirens. I knew it was in one of those three shops on the um, either Solvera, Kaipo, or um, Papul. And I got it on the last one, so I wasted a bit of time looking for Sirens. Yeah, there's uh, another player was going in not too far behind you out of the Underworld, but uh, they were choosing a different strategy for the Z fight, and it wasn't quite as efficient as your Reflex strategy. Oh, right. Did, um, assuming people didn't do, um, Baron, then you wouldn't want to keep a second Rydia, probably. So I, I kept it because there's no Leviathan. Yes, uh, at least one person didn't keep two Rydias, one person didn't keep Forum. I can't remember all the party makeups, but, uh, if you did Twin Heart, you were rewarded with an Excalibur. Ooh. Okay, well, that... That's, that wouldn't have been good for me, but I mean, like, because that probably would have made me get rid of a Rydia or something, so I'm glad I didn't do that at all. <laughs> you still had your Cecil, but you had yours as an anchor. Yeah, exactly. Uh, do you have any other thoughts on the seed? It was definitely a brisk one. Um, so, out of the four seeds I've had, uh, two of them have been jet seeds, like, like this one, which I came first in, and then th the other two, where I came third in, uh, have been a uh, value of Bahamut. So I'm like 50-50 for Jet or Bahamut at this point. So um, I assume I'm not going to get any other Cs besides those two in, if I move, like, when I move forward. That's right. So hopefully That's more Jets. <laughs> Indeed, this is going to put you at 12 points. You're, uh, how do you feel about your standings right now? I feel, I feel a lot better. I was... Really, I was like banking on getting first today. Like uh, I was really hoping I would because I wasn't particularly happy with my my last um, my last race. But I'm I'm really happy with this though. <laughs> That's definitely good. I think you're going to be in a pretty safe position. Uh, I think your strength and schedule is going to go and measure up pretty well with this. Nice. <laughs> All right, we'll let you go. GG's again. All right, cool. GG. Catch you guys. While we were having a talk with peasants. Unfortunately, Mechalim took a wipe to Zeomus, which put, which gave Poijack time to catch up, and they are both now in the Z fight at the same time. The difference being is that Poijack has five people up and four of them doing damage, where Mechalim is leaving that one Rydia who is his anchor dead, so he's got just a little bit less DPS to be putting out. I believe Mechelin is using a uh, Archer Cecil using Artemis arrows and some type of bow where Poitrak has an Excalibur who is putting out four to 5,000 damage a swing. That's, uh, that's a pretty sizable advantage. We now have the, all three of our remaining runners in the Z fight as Big Dunga joins the rest of the crew and seeing who could take this guy down first. This is going to be a nail biter. This is, ooh, that's a pretty harsh big bang on Poitrax side. But who's got it here for all, all queued up and ready to heal up his characters? And unless, oh, and there's the black hole, which will at least slow that Cecil down from his berserk state. But that's a quick going to be something that's quickly reapplied for him to start doing high damage again. Oh yeah, there's no stopping this Cecil. He needs to go and be cutting this uh, Zeomus to pieces. Someone in chat is asking where the Excalibur was. Yes, it was at Twin Heart. 
so only those who chose to give us music got the best of the best swords. And Portrick is showing out what it does because that uh, that Excalibur is definitely giving him a lot of play. Meanwhile, Big Dunka is down to Rydia's and up a forum, but uh, that forum only has 1800 HP. This is going to be a bit dicey for him because he did not go into Baron. He saved time on the check, but he didn't save. He, I don't think he got that many savings that I'm not getting a food. And not having the Leviathan to get him through those underground bosses also slowed him down a little bit. So that Baron ended up being a lot more valuable than it initially appeared because you got Fu and a Leviathan with two Rydias. So it gave you an insane amount of damage. And he is taking a reset. His form went down, not at full health, and that's not something you can do with form. You need to go and have her up. Taking off a flame move, which goes and gives some agility to Rydia, which I guess he's thinking he's going to help fix his agility issues. This is going to be... This is going to be a hard fight for Big Nunca, I feel. Meanwhile, Poitrak and... Ooh, Poitrak going, has, having his cane go down, and his Fasoya is almost down, but throwing out Cure 4s and getting ready to get back into the fight, I think. Poitrak looks like he's ready to just say, Alright, Cecil, you go, you kill, I'll try to keep you alive. Some... In some seeds, Cecil and Fu are all you need. There he goes queuing up his Cure 4 so that he can make sure that they both stay up. That was a really high damage roll, but he's able to get the Cure off before that life takes away because Big Bang applies a virus-like effect where your health will drain for a limited time. Yeah, with how fast this fight goes, it's, uh... That limited time is not so limited. It looks like Mechalink is still pumping out the damage while keeping everyone in his team at relatively safe health. Yep, he's reflecting some nukes, so he's uh, he's still trying to go and get extra value out of this food rather than going just leaning on him to be a full white mage. It's uh. The big thing here is it took peasants a bit longer on grinding, but the the new Comradia really helped him just sail through this fight. He didn't have to go and take as many big bangs. He didn't have to worry about just taking as many hits. We see we are in nukes, nuke phase in four in a uh, scene, but medio phase in Mechalink's screen. Mechalink is getting close to the end. He might be getting through this, choosing to throw out a quake instead of going for a nuke. He just wants to end this now. And he does. He is in second place. Mechalink with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 25 minutes, and 37 seconds. GG to Mechalink. On the bottom of the screen is we see if we can get Mechalink in here for an interview. It looks like we have Poidrak, who is still just keeping that Cecil alive and has him just slapping away with that Excalibur. He's probably really happy he checked Twin Harp. And Big Dunka is just going full hybrid strats, doing whatever he can to get just a little bit of damage out of that Rydia. Yeah, these are, uh... Poidrak's in media phase as well. He's close to the end. He just needs to get that last bit through. Big Dunka is losing one to uh, not so nice Big Bang, and Poidrak appears to have got through that last little bit. He has finished with an official SRL time of 1 hour 26 minutes and 41 seconds. We'll see if we can get in, in here as well, but we are joined by Mechalink. Congratulations on your second place finish. Uh, yeah, that feels, that feels good. <laughs> what made you choose to go for mostly berserker strats rather than going for hybrid or fuck crap? Uh, ran out of sirens, so I didn't have nuke on two thirds of the characters. Right, ah. and so at at that point, it was like we're in hybrid, right? Like like just trying to get every nuke I can in with Fusoya, and otherwise I have to berserk, and then the other two just 
do their best. Yeah, that was definitely a dangerous fight. You, I believe you had uh, Cecil using Artemis arrows in an elven bow, is that correct? Yes, that's... It was, he was like, it was either that or you had a cane on like a dwarf axe and him on a, oh, on a like, <laughs> none of those weapon options are good. Speaking uh, of weapon options, we're joined by Pordrak, the third place manager of GC Pordrak. Would you mind going in and telling Mechanlink what weapons you were rocking on, Cecil? Oh, just an Excalibur, which was a twin hop. But I, uh, that was the limit of my luck. Like, I knew I used, used the majority of it it's up earlier today. Yeah, I I did not do twin harp, and so I don't. That I was uh, elven elven bow, Artemis arrows, or ogre axe were my options, and I had Kane with the ogre axe. <laughs> my problem was uh, Bacchus. If I had a Bacchus wine, that would have been so much easier. Yeah, Bacchus wines would have made that a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, particularly since you chose to give up your porum, I believe. Correct, Poitrack? I did indeed. Uh, at that time, it was thinking, and the seed was going to be a little bit longer in finding some, and finding some, finding the Bacchus wines, finding in the, maybe a couple of weapons on the way a, to finding the way to Thomas, but obviously not. Uh, it was passing, uh, passing the rat tail chest to go. Oh, here you go. Let's just go to Thomas and win the fight. Yeah, yeah this... that's. Sorry. No, that's like, that, yeah, that's exactly where I was. That's why I ditched one of my Rydias, because I was similarly like, you know, I was actually kind of like figuring like, even if it's a long seed, like we're not going to get a better summon, right? Like, so, but it ended up being that like, you kind of wanted to ditch Kane or Cecil and like go with four mages. <laughs> that is in fact what Peasants did. He ditched Kane. He went yep. with two Rydias, Porum and Fu. Yeah, and, no, that, uh, that that seems like that would have been the correct approach. It just, that's not the choice that either of us made. <laughs> uh, I, f I feel my problem was more I was just wasting too much time going back and forth. I went down into Cave Eblen three times. Um, uh, that's, that's at least one too many. Yeah, I did it twice, um, but yeah, three times seems real rough. I got to Odin and sort of saw that fight and went, I don't have the ability to do that yet, let's uh, go back up. Did, uh, got the Excalibur from Twin Harp, got Fu and thought, yep, now I can go. But still, yeah, okay. getting some Plague at that point was still difficult because no nuke on Fu for me at that point. Yeah, same. I didn't have nuke for Fu either. Um, I had, I think I had White, but he didn't have the time to use it. <laughs> I had the virus down. He was the one that was killing my characters for me. And with if the Berserk coming at the very end of his spell list, it was like, yep. how am I actually going to defeat this quickly? And it was like, okay, fight, fight, right, get the occasional Leviathan off, get uh, get the uh, get uh, some viruses off with Fu, while trying to keep uh, keep up with the life uh, life raising. It, yep, it, it was a very involved fight for what it should have been. Yeah, I had it a little easier because I had access to Berserk from my Purim, so I got Kane just got to sit there and swing. And then otherwise it was exactly the same, just sneaking in just enough life, sneaking in Leviathans, etc. Yeah, it was a very long, protracted fight for both of you. Well, for everyone, really. It was not, uh, there was no one who just walked into that fight and sailed through it, so congratulations to both of you for dealing with that, because uh, that seems incredibly annoying. Mm -hmm. uh, do either of you have any other final thoughts on the seed? Nothing about the seed. Uh, for going forward, I, I need a win now in my last race, which is on Wednesday. I, I'm currently at six points. I'm, I'm, to get that magical 10, I need a win on Wednesday. But going up with the people I've got there, that's going to be a tall order. So I'm just going to have to go in there and hope. Yeah, and I'm I'm in the I need to get three points to get to ten, uh, but I'm up against you know pretty tough crew with invenerable headlining. So, yeah, it's this is not an easy set of, set of thirty-two. Yeah, I've got Wubear, Kabahi, and Kedril. Um, <laughs> yeah, that's a rough one. 
You guys definitely hard. have your work cut out for you these those next two matches. Yeah. It, you, it is, I think it's theoretically possible you can sneak in with nine at, at the current rate of things going, but you need a high uh, strength of schedule, which mm -hmm. I won't have, I believe. So um, going on on the uh, the people I faced, um, other people uh, other people are sure to get in ahead of me, but we'll we'll see how things things plan out uh, play out when we get through these things. All we can say is good luck for the next races and see what happens. Yep, uh, good, lu good luck to you and GG's on this one. Yep, GG to you. And GG's, GG's to you both, and it isn't over till it's over. We'll be looking forward to your races with bated breath. Have a good evening. Come back. Yep, come back Wednesday. See one of us two. <laughs> GG's, guys. And with that, we're uh, back to Big Noka taking another wave, just going to try and get through this sea fight. It's uh, it's not an easy one for him. Does not go and make for an easy sea fight. And I believe that is why Rosa will always be the best white mage. She's just so much better in this Z fight, in my opinion. I mean, when it takes Forum until about level 60 to get 23, 2400 HP, it's kind of hard to argue, unfortunately. I was a fan of the small child until I paid close attention to how long it took for her HP to get over 2000, and um, that was not a number I liked. You don't like grinding for several extra minutes just to have your white mage be useful in the last fight? That's no fun. You know, I look at Forum and I think, you're going to be very useful throwing whites and hoping we can get a reflect kill. Hey, every pair of twins, it's one good one and one bad one. She just got, she got the draw that was not a good one. Uh, and I'm getting challenges from chat to convert me to the Church of Forum. It's going to be a very hard thing to do because I used to be a believer. And then I got burned. Now I'm a believer in nothing but overwhelming damage. Yeah, and Big Duncan taking a reset, just going back out. This is... He is not having a good time with this fight. He's check it looked like he was checking his agility to see if there was a better anchor that he had. And I don't think he found anything that made him happy. Yeah, I think his lowest agility I saw was 32 on Cecil, which it's okay, but certainly not the best. And uh, I believe Demarine has went and given me the appropriate knowledge that Horum will go and have 20 agility on her own at level 57, which is a bit. If you thought grinding for that white was bad, <laughs> trying to get that agility on her sounds even worse. Yeah, that's uh, that is a hard swing. He's got four Julian Rydia, having found a curse ring. So, Zeromitz will be fast, but without Bacchus wines, this is going to be very difficult. He doesn't have the food, so he has to rely on Porum for healing, and Porum doesn't have a lot of time to do anything but heal. This is this is an ugly fight. It's it's definitely a rough situation to be in, but. If there's one thing I know about Big Dunga, it's he's got the skill to pull this off. Oh yeah, this is definitely... It's hard, but it's doable. Meanwhile, while we're waiting for Big Duncan to go back and do his fight, if you're looking, if you're looking at uh, this, and this looks fun and interesting, but I've never seen it before. Where can I find out more? You can always go to uh, www.ff4fe.com to go and see and roll your own seeds, or you can join us on the Discord, which is linked on that site. And we also, on that Discord, do have what we call a newbies corner for people who want to learn. 
when I first started learning the game, I asked all sorts of silly questions in there. And now I have a pretty good idea of how this randomizer works to the point to where they let me do commentary. I always like to get new people in and in involved. But uh, one of the things we do to help with that is that we have the Humming Way Open, which is starting this week. We closed registration on this past Saturday, and now it's another tournament like the Highway to the Zerum Zone. But it's uh, special qualifications in that if you qualify for Highway to the Zerum Zima Zone, you are not allowed to participate in it, so you can go and let the new players get a better chance. I'm not guaranteed to restream many, if any, of these races, but you can you might go and be able to catch some of the private stream, uh, catch some of the matches on private streams, as it is required to stream your matches for this tournament. And we have not mentioned this, but. This lovely sprite that you're seeing was added by our very own Scala Kitty, who has done most of these sprites. Where you get different types of, or different sprites for the final form of Zeromus. Indeed, and that's not the only sprite work she's on. If you're looking at these palettes and thinking, wait a second, these characters didn't look like that in my version. She's also gone and given us the uh, Dash Fab flag, which gives us three colors of characters and uh, gives us great things like Hot Pink Rydia or Goth Dark Wizard uh, Forum. One of my favorite fabs that I've seen is when you get Rose and Edward with their black and red scheme. They look like they're about to attend a My Chemical Romance concert. And growing up, I loved that band. <laughs> So we're like... saying... Go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say, if this just means there's a lot of love for this. And Big Nunca is going back, reserving Cecil and getting back in. It looks like with the with that black hole, or the black hole that was just cast, it gave him a little bit of time to reset and refill his health a little bit before he got into too much trouble, which is always welcome. Indeed, he's doing all right damage. It's a bit low for what you want for Zeromus, but you might be able to go and push through this. It's going to go and you need to go and make sure you keep Forum up and keep her HP high. She is going. This is going to be a long fight for Big Dunk Up. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I believe that every three big bangs, he will throw out a single virus spell. Indeed, he will go and do an AoE virus on the entire party. Not exceptionally high spell power, but it can be enough to go and take you from almost dead to definitely dead. And that can be especially dangerous because... As I mentioned before, the virus spell will drain your health, as will Big Bang. So if you have a very fast Zeromus, you could end up just bleeding your health out at an exceptional rate. And it gets really scary really fast when he does that. Oh yeah, it's, uh, it is not a fun time to go and be taking those Big Bangs and going and be losing HP. However, Big Dunka, Cure queuing up that Cure 4 right before he casts the Big Bang, which you'll notice the sprite shake a little bit, and there's also an audio cue when he's about to do the Big Bang, so that lets Big Dunker know I need to queue up something to counteract the big damage that's coming my way. Indeed, I believe he uh, got that Berserk off. No, he got that Berserk off just in the proper time to reapply it and he sees the nukes Ooh, oh dear nuke coming straight out on forum and not quite taking her out but she's going to need to heal herself up after this but by seeing that nuke we know we're in nuke phase we've gone through the first 40,000 hp zeromus is down to about is below 60,000 health and we're getting closer to the end throwing ether 2 on forum to make sure that she's topped up an mp she was definitely getting a little bit low. It's uh, not very often you see your 
point made his MP go down, and then we're in Medio phase. We are getting close to the end. Big Dunk is almost through. Just needs the last heroic push to finish this off. Chat, I want to see that chat flooded with GGs for Big Dunka. Uh, he's putting on a hell of a show and not giving up, which is always great to see out of our races. He's here to entertain the people. Yeah, he's here to show Z Zeomess who's boss, and that boss is not Zeomess. And you'll notice that when he does enter the media phase, it is a much less scary phase than the Big Bangs because it does much less damage. And that is a GG. Big Dunko finishing with an official SRL time of 1 hour, 43 minutes, and 8 seconds. GG, Big Dunk. I believe we're going to try to get him in here for an interview. But once again, I would really, really like to thank our restream team, both the restreamer and the tracker. It is a pleasure working with you always. And Baka Shinobi, who is one of the higher ups in the standing of our league, has been a pleasure to commentate with you, sir. Uh, it's been a great time commentating with you tonight as well. And definitely want to go and give all these runners a follow if we, uh, as they're all great runners. You don't go and get to the round of 32 without going and being a good runner. Big Dunk is going to uh, decline in the interview, which I can understand. He's had a long night. He just wants to go and... Uh, take things easy so that's going to wrap things up for us that uh that was a match you don't uh a jet hook seed is a stressful jet seed well every jet seed stressful but knowing that you've been gated by this boss and if anyone was getting through faster than you that uh that gets pretty scary oh that uh that was certainly a race That was a very fun race to watch, and it looks like we will soon be raiding Bahama X's channel. A longtime member of the community and a fine streamer of Free Enterprise. And if you're going and looking for when the next match is, there will be two matches being played, both at 7 p.m. Eastern, Wednesday, August 14th. Both at 7 p.m., one on this channel here, Free Enterprise, and one will be on RPG Limit Break. I highly encourage you, if you enjoy this, to watch both of those, as once again, there's going to be some good restreamers, great commentary, and I'm looking forward to sitting back and just watching those two, because they're going to be some really good matches. Oh, yes, we're going to have Invenerable, Martha Sar, Mechalink, and Scratch Dragon on Free Enterprise, and we will have Kedril, Wubear, Poidrek, and Kobahi on RPG Limit Break. Again, that's Wednesday, August 14th at 7 p.m. Eastern for both races. And with that, I believe we're done. This has been a fine night for Free Enterprise and a fine night for us all. Thank you again for commenting with me, Tower. Thank you, it's been a pleasure. And as we said, we're going to be raiding Bahamut X. Let's go and show him it, our support and our love, and have a nice evening.